morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, August the 4th. I want to uh, introduce you to Dr. Christel, Christel Ibudo. Welcome, Thank Doctor, you. to Thank uh, you Radio me. Friends. We're going to talk about the Zika virus today. Now, most of us, or many of us, just started hearing about the Zika virus maybe a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dr. Ibudo tells me that it's been around, Zika has been around since what, the 1940s? Yes, yes. So Zika has been around in central western parts of Africa since the 1940s. It was discovered while people were studying the yellow fever virus. And then over the decades, it moved to the South Asian countries. Um, what's happened recently since 2013 is that there's a new strain. So there's been a mutation in this virus. And now it there's is a new a, strain of it, you said? Yes. So now they say that there's an Asian strain and there's an African strain. And so the Asian strain is the one that is causing more, more, more trouble. And it is creating that trouble in populations that have never seen Zika before. So that's the problem is the countries who never had Zika before are now seeing that. And that's why we have the, the cases that we're seeing and the severity that you're, we are you're seeing. You're saying that the Zika virus is in the same family as yellow fever. Yes. Zika has been around since the 40s, mm -hmm. but it has now arrived in the United States. It arrived in the Americas. We do not have any cases yet of our mosquitoes in the U.S. carrying the virus. But, but, but we have people living here that have the Zika virus. That's correct. Now, if a person who is infected with the Zika virus is bitten by a mosquito, and that mosquito bites another person, or is that other person going to be infected automatically with the Zika virus? There is a possibility. Um, th there's also a time frame. So the Zika virus, once, once the mosquito transmitted to an individual, that virus can stay in someone's system for a couple of days, um, and so it's well, really only during, a couple of days. Up to a week is what what's recommended. We don't really know yet how long, but it says that it's during that period where people have the virus in the blood that they are likely to then transmit it back to the mosquito, and that mosquito can continue to carry it around to other people. Okay, I thought once you had the Zika virus in your body, it stayed with you indefinitely. So. What you're saying that, let's say someone traveled to a part of the world that has the Zika virus. Mm -hmm. They are bitten by a mosquito. Mm -hmm. They come back home to the United States. Um, and after a week or so, they are not infected any longer with that virus in their bloodstream? That is what we are currently believing. Um, if we, the studies that we have really uses the viruses that are in the same family, the yellow fever, the dengue, and chikungunya virus. And based on the way that those viruses behave, we are seeing a similar pattern. But there's more that we have yet to discover about how this virus really function, how long does it stay around, what, all are, what are all the ways that it can get transmitted. We're still working on okay. that. Okay, and just because you were bitten by a mosquito that has the virus does not mean that you're gonna get sick with it either, right? Not automatically, no. No. And most people, 80 plus percent of people who have, who get exposed to the virus, meaning they were bitten and they get the virus, they don't have any symptoms. And so that's, that's really been the, the key thing that we've seen is that most, in general, people don't have symptoms. Then why has it made so much news lately, almost to the point that we're, it's an epidemic. Why is that? Yeah, so it's because that 20% of people who do get symptoms, some of them will go on and have the neurological deficits that we talk about, the Guillain-Barre syndrome, where they lose, basically they lose uh, uh, usage of their, of their extremities with the nerves, but over time they can gain that. And then the uh, the other reason why it is it's been such a such a thing in the news is because of the pregnancy related infections that we were seeing and how it's been affecting babies that have been born to women who had Zika virus infection during the pregnancy. So a woman could have the Zika virus uh, in her body, 
become pregnant, is it could could the baby be born normally or will the baby have a problem? The baby could be born normally. So we really don't know. There still is not exactly. a, there still is not enough research that's been done for definite answers on this. Exactly, but we know for a fact that there has been an increase in the babies who are born with small heads in the areas that we're seeing the Zika virus infection uh, being more prominent. So for example, Brazil, that's how it came up to the news is that they've seen uh, an uptick in the number of the babies that were born with small head at the same time that we had seen an uptick in people who were infected with the Zika virus. So what do you say to people listening to us now? If they're really concerned about traveling to a, a part of the world that is infected with the Zika virus, can you, can you do anything to protect yourself before you go? Absolutely. So for women that are pregnant or considering getting pregnant, it is recommended to not travel if they can avoid it. If they are planning on traveling, it is recommended to use preventions um, that they would typically use for mosquitoes. So wearing long sleeve shirts, using DEET containing a pest, uh, um, insecticides on the on the bodies during the entire travel time. But there is no mosquito there, nets. There, there is no inoculation that you can take. No, no vaccine. No, no vaccines. I know there are people working on it diligently, but so far we don't have any vaccines. Okay. So the important thing to keep in mind is if you are going to be traveling to a part of the world that is known to have the Zika virus is, is take precautions not to be bitten by mosquitoes. Exactly. And when they come back, it's recommended that they sustain from uh, sexual activity for eight weeks eight or weeks? use protection, the women. Now for the men, it is actually recommended that they go longer, six months, because we think so that- So if, if a man comes back from a part of the world that has Zika virus, he should abstain from sex for six months? If he has symptoms. If he has if symptoms. If he doesn't have symptoms, it's still eight weeks. Eight weeks, mm -hmm. okay. If people want more information on any of this, can they go to the University Hospital website? Absolutely, you can go to muhealth.org uh, forward slash Zika, or the CDC website also has a lot of information about the Zika virus, how to protect yourself. Okay, so, so go to www.muhealth.org slash Zika, Absolutely. and it will have all of the information that you need on here. Absolutely. Doctor, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for having me, it, it's been a it pleasure. It was really enlightening chatting with you. Thank you. All right, we're out of time for today, uh, tomorrow, We've got music by the Boone County Hams. If there's something you would like to hear or see, I'd love to hear from you. Just drop me an email. That's pepperp at missouri.edu and have yourself a nice day. Bye-bye.